Hi everyone, delighted to be with you for Book Week Scotland because I get to talk lots about books and I hope that you do as well. I'm here because I am an author and an illustrator and my book, The Girl Who... Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> There we go. My book, The Girl Who Stole the Stars, has just come out. And I'm an author and an illustrator because I wrote the words to this story and I also drew the pictures. And today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my journey as an illustrator and we're going to be getting to do some drawing. Now, let me tell you a bit about how I became an illustrator. A few years ago, I had been writing stories and I was determined to see one become a picture book. But I needed to find an illustrator who would be able to do the pictures for me because at that point, I didn't think I was going to be able to draw them myself. So I went out and I investigated and I found all these incredible illustrators who were making the most beautiful things. But unfortunately, they were very, very expensive and I couldn't afford to get an illustrator to draw the pictures for my books. But I have a great auntie called Great Auntie Lucy, who sounds a little bit like she should be from Paddington Bear, but she's not the one from Paddington Bear. My Great Aunt Lucy said to me, give it a go yourself. You are very good at drawing. Why don't you have a shot and see how you get on? And she gave me one very helpful tip and that's what I'm going to pass on to you today. She said to me, go and look at picture books. How are people illustrating them? What are they doing? Are they cutting things out and sticking them down? Are they using ink? Are they using paint? Are they using pens? Are they using a mixture of everything? What are they doing to make the book? And she said to me, go away and explore different ways of illustrating and making picture books and see how you get on. And I did. And that was really how my uh, journey began. I started to teach myself how to draw. I looked at what other illustrators were doing. I tried it out. I s decided to have a look and see if I could do it, if I could do it well, how it worked. There are lots of different ways that you can illustrate books. And if you would like to be an illustrator, what I recommend you do is go and look at picture books. Have a look and see what people are doing to illustrate them. And then try and replicate that yourself and see if you can manage to create a similar picture. What you'll usually find is it will never be identical to what you've seen in the book because you almost put your own style to it. So your own style will then start to emerge by practicing trying different techniques and different ways of illustrating books. So that's a little bit about how I became an illustrator. And I have to tell you that I took lots and lots of practice and I made loads of mistakes. And mistakes for me are really, really good because if you don't make a mistake, how do you know how to get better? So I would look at my work and I would say, it's not quite right, what do I need to change? And then I would go away and I would try it again. We call this having a growth mindset and I feel that has been massively important to me. I had to keep saying to myself to keep trying, to keep trying to improve, to always look at my work and say, well, it's not there yet, but how can it be better? How can I do this? How can I reach that end goal? And it did take a lot of practice and it did take a lot of time, but eventually I got there and I was really pleased that I did. And I'm going to show you how far I've come. Wait there. Let me show you just exactly what I mean by this. So one of the first pictures I drew of the girl climbing up the ladder to get the stars was this. Uh, now, if this is where I started, you can now see the difference between that picture and that picture. So it took a lot of practice. It took a lot of hard work. There were points where I actually wanted to cry and I would say to my husband, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I could do this. And he was very good at saying to me, you can, you can do this, keep going. And I did, and we had lots of practice. I think that's lots of girls that I was drawing there for the main character. You can see here the woolly jumper starts to emerge. And then eventually we get on to, they're all starting to climb up ladders that are resembling the main character. And I must have maybe about a hundred bits of paper with ladders and with girls climbing up ladders and I had to keep practicing and keep practicing until eventually, eventually we got to the picture that I was looking for. So let me tell you that mistakes matter. If you make a mistake, don't look at it as a negative, look at it as a positive because you're recognising something isn't right and that you need to make it better. What you actually don't always see from illustrators is the mountains and mountains and mountains of sketchbooks that they have. And inside those sketchbooks, there are different things they are trying, there are loads of mistakes, it is practice, practice, practice. But unfortunately, all you usually get to see is the end result. So it's really important to understand that there's a huge journey that goes on 
behind the scenes in terms of being able to create something like a picture book and I'll show you some of the sketchbook just now now mine are varied because sometimes my kids get hold of them and they draw in them as well but I'll give you a quick flick through of some of all the things there we go loads of drawings in there loads of doodles there's a grouse randomly at the back here's another one and I probably have maybe about 20 odd of these pictures uh, of these sketch pads here's another one it just takes lots and lots and lots of practice lots of drawing and lots of time and lots of effort anyway today we are going to be doing some drawing together which i am super excited about mainly because i get to draw as well and we're going to start off by doing something called the scribble challenge now all you're going to need for this is some pens and pencils and it doesn't matter what kind of pens and pencils you have because any will do and i want you to just take one that you have handy i've got a black pencil here i want you to take your piece of paper and i would like you to put a scribble on it you ready go Stop. <laughs> All right. Show everybody your masterpiece. Hold up your scribble and let everybody have a look at your scribble. Now, what I love about illustration and one of the main things that I like to focus on is you have to be able to be quite imaginative when you're drawing. You have to be able to see things that you maybe wouldn't see in real life. So, for example, a girl climbing up a ladder to take all the stars from the sky wouldn't necessarily happen. You need to have the imagination to make that happen. Often you'll find a lot of these children's picture books have animals that have come to life and you have to be able to bring things to life in order for people to be able to relate to them. What I would like you to now do is you're going to swap scribbles with somebody nearby to you. So either across the table from you or beside you, swap your scribble over with somebody that you can reach quite quickly. Do that now. Okay, hopefully everybody has a brand new scribble in front of them. Fantastic. All right, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you, oh, how long? Let's give you three minutes and we're going to see if you can turn the scribble into something. Now, it can be absolutely anything you want, but I'm going to give you some hints and tips to help you with this. You don't have to keep the scribble the way that the person has given it to you. You can turn it round to see if you can spot any features. So things you might look for are eyes or legs or hands or feet. You might look for a shape that you can identify that could become something. Now, worst case scenario I find is that I can always turn these sorts of things into people's hairdos. So if you are really struggling, you can just draw in a face at the bottom and make it into their hair. But you could make it into an animal. It could be a snail. It could be, gosh, what else could it be? I need to have a really good look at this one. You'll be able to see lots of different shapes and things. Look for eyes and see what you can spot. But I'm going to give you three minutes on the timer to see if you can turn your scribble into something. A couple of things you need to know about the scribble challenge. Number one, you can use any colour you want so you can add colours. Number two, it doesn't have to be perfect and you can turn it into anything and if you're really struggling make it into somebody's hat or make it into their hair if it's all fuzzy on top of their head or make it into a snail shell because those are usually the ones that I would go for but you might be lucky and you might be able to see something a bit more interesting maybe like a car or a helicopter or a truck so here comes my timer da -da 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 -da. And we're going to have three minutes on the sand timer and we're actually going to do this all together. I'm going to do this at the same time. And as you know, I just drew the scribble, so I'm going to have to really think about how I'm going to turn it into something. Are you ready? And it doesn't need to be anything fancy. You don't need to rub anything out. Just sketch away. Have a really good think about what it can be. On your marks, get set, scribble challenge. show you mine so far if any of you are starting to struggle.
time up everybody well done you probably find that quite tricky it is quite a tricky challenge that one we are going to share all of our scribbles we're going to go one two three and then we're going to hold them all up and show everybody ready one two three oh well done everyone oh great they are looking absolutely fantastic and it doesn't really matter how daft they are because it it's just sketching. It's just meant to be for fun. And that's really what the Scribble Challenge is all about, is just having a bit of fun with drawing. Now, I'm going to teach you how to draw something. I'm going to turn this camera around so that you can see exactly what I'm drawing. You're going to need a fresh piece of paper. And remember, just use the pens and pencils that you have. And welcome to my desk. I've tidied it especially for you. I can guarantee it usually isn't this tidy. Right, let's get on with some drawing. That's the part we're all here for, really. So as you can see, I've just got some pencils and I have some pens. And I think what we'll do, first of all, is we'll start by just using one of our pens. We're going to do a bit of a practice and a bit of a warm up because there are some shapes and lines that I would like you to practice first before we get on to doing the actual illustration that we're going to be doing today. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the circle shape. And you can draw this on your piece of paper. This is just your practice because we're going to be using this circle shape quite a lot, but we're also going to be using a curly K and a backwards curly K. So these are some of the shapes that we will be needing to do today. And you can have a quick practice of doing them. So we go circle, curly K, backwards curly K. Other shape we're going to need today is a V shape. And for the V shape, it's just simply down and up. We can practice a few of those, get the hand moving in the right direction. And the next thing I'm going to get you to do a quick practice of is what I call curly whirlies. And curly whirlies look like this. Now, the good thing with curly whirlies is that you can do them big. Like that. And you can do them tea. like that and what you notice when you do them big and teeny is that the big ones obviously you can see more of the white and the little ones are slightly darker and this is quite useful when we're doing some of our coloring at the end because you can darken things by using the curly whirlies to add some darkness and light into the picture and that's what makes pictures look 3d is when you add dark and light features to them Let's also have a look at doing some dark and light with the patterns that we have done already. So what I would like you to do is choose a colour, uh, choose a colour pencil, because it's pencil you're going to need. I'm going to need to sharpen that one. And you've got some options for doing dark and light, and we're going to do this on our V shape up here. So first of all, what you want to do is start off with light, and we're just going to colour one in very, very lightly. Right, now what we can do is if you press a little bit harder, I'd like you to make half of it dark. So we now have the light and the dark on the triangle. And then with your pencil, what I want you to do is see if you can get rid of that line by what I call blending the two together. So adding a little bit of extra color over the line so it looks that it's blended together. So you've still got the light here and it's getting progressively darker without seeing the line. Try that again on your next triangle. Now, I would also like you to see if in your pencil pack you have a dark grey or a dark black. I'm going to use a grey, but you can also use black for this. And what we're going to do is just taking the dark area of the V that we've already done, we're going to just darken it slightly in the top corner just to give it a little bit of extra darkness. Like that. And that is how you can create dark and light in your illustration. You can either choose to press a little bit harder with your pencil or indeed you can take a darker colour and add the dark on top of what you've already done. You might be lucky enough, for example, if I look in my pen pot, to have different shades of the same colour and one might be lighter and one might be darker. And you might be able to work with those in order to create light and dark within your pictures. But light and dark is going to be really important today as well as all these shapes that we've been doing. Right, 
Right, what we're going to be drawing today is we're going to be taking one of the hidden characters from Inside the Girl Who Stole the Stars. So if you haven't had a chance to see my book yet, let me show you what I'm talking about. Inside this book, there is hidden a little mouse and his name is Chris. He is Chris Mouse. <laughs> he's one of actually, he's actually one of my favourite characters to draw. But you have to look very carefully to find him because he is actually very small and hidden within the pages. So there he is asleep. And again, he is lucky because he also gets left a present at Christmas time. There he is there. And we're going to learn how to draw Chris Mouse today. Now my favourite part of Chris Mouse and my favourite part of illustrating is drawing woolly jumpers and you can see the curly whirlies that I have in here and I use that an awful lot in my drawing because I really enjoy a woolly jumper there it is again there and what I do is I use the curly whirlies to create dark and light and to create texture in the image so we're going to be giving our mouse a woolly jumper today so what we're going to do first of all is you're going to start by looking at where the halfway the middle point is in your page so you want to find the halfway point like that and you're going to have a think about where you're going to draw your picture because quite often you'll find that you'll tend to probably start below halfway which doesn't leave you very much room at the bottom we're going to be starting with the head just above the halfway point on your page so you've got plenty of room to draw the rest of the body so finding halfway in the page you're wanting to draw the first part of Chris Mouse's head which is going to be a V shape just slightly above the halfway point on your page and we simply go down and up to create the V. You're probably going to be able to work out what part of his face this is going to be. This is obviously going to be his nose. We're now going to be looking at drawing in his ears. The ears are going to be two curly kids. The first one starts just beyond the halfway point. So if his nose is going to be here, we go up and then slightly over to the side and we're going to do a nice big curly kiss round and join on to the top of the V that you've already done. We're then going to leave a gap at the top and you're going to do the exact same thing again, but this time you're doing it backwards. So our curly kit is going to be backwards and the ear comes out around the other side and tucks into there. Now, looking at Chris Mouse at the moment, if his brain was in here, it would be able to pour out of the top of his head and we can't have brains pouring out the tops of heads. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a think about where the top of his head would be. And I think the top of the mouse's head would probably be about here. So I'm going to start adding some of some of his fur and you just need to draw short lines for this. Give him a little bit of hair on top of his head and then bring the hair up, round and down the ear. And it's just short little lines that I'm drawing up, round and down the ear like that. So you can see now we've got two ears, we've got his brain staying inside his head and now what we're going to need to do is give him some eyes. Now we're going to make him a cartoon mouse. So we're going to give him two circles for eyes. One and two. And inside the eyes I put the black dots. Now quite often when I do the black dots I leave a little tiny fleck of white. And the reason for that is I just like to show that the light is reflecting on the eye. So I'm going to do a wee black circle like that, but you'll notice that I'll leave a tiny little bit of white in the middle there. Let me bring that up to show you like that. So see if you can add in Chris Mouse's eyes, the black circles. The next part we're going to do is his nose. And I particularly like the nose because I don't like it to be too perfect. I like it to be quite rough and obviously drawn. If you look at some of my original Chris Mouses, and I'll show you them here, this is a good example. Here's one of the ones that I drew for the book. And if you look very carefully at his nose, it's not a perfect nose, it's just a squiggle with the pen. And I quite like that effect. I like to show people that it has been drawn it's not just stuck on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a round circle squiggle for the nose. You don't want it right on the tip, you want it slightly further into his body. And we'll just go like that. And you can leave some white in the nose again as well. Very good. Now the next part is the really important part. And I'm going to show you first before you do this. We are going to be giving Chris Mouse some eyebrows. Now eyebrows, when you're drawing them onto characters, are really, really important because they show us the emotion of the character. Let me show you how that works. If Chris Mouse was just a happy mouse, no problems at all, he would just have nice curved eyebrows above his head 
like so. Let me see, just check you can see them clearly. There we go. He's just got eyebrows, just normal eyebrows, two curved lines above his eyes. However, let's rub those out. If Chris Mouse was feeling angry, you would want to change those and do two sharp, dark lines going down the way and they can be scribbled like that. And immediately your mouse becomes angry. If we rub those ones out, we could also have a look at doing some what I call inquisitive eyebrows, which means that maybe he's asking a question. So again, you can have one nice eyebrow going there and then you can raise one up like so, as if he's saying, huh, I don't understand what's going on. So eyebrows are really important. I'm just going to give him two normal eyebrows and I'll use my pen again. So I can just put in one eyebrow above that eye and one eyebrow above that eye. And you can have a think about what kind of emotion your mouse is going to have. Is he happy? Is he sad? Is he angry? Is he inquisitive? It's entirely up to you. Right, the next thing we're going to do, and this is the best part, is his wooly jumper. And I would change colours for this. Now, it's up to you whether you want to use pen or whether you want to use pencil. I quite like using pencil just because I feel it gives a more grainy look. I would call it more texture. And it looks like wool. So I'm going to use a pencil, but it is up to you pen is just as good. What we're going to be doing is giving our mouse a body and generally speaking we're going to be giving him a round body so we're looking to create a circle shape just using curly whirlies. Now when you start to do this you're going to not want to draw on the mouse but behind the mouse and starting up by his nose. So I'm going to start off with some curlies and I'm going to do fairly light curly whirlies on either side of his nose and I'm gonna bring them down and round fairly big like this. So it creates a, like a knitted effect. He looks like he's got a knitted woolly jumper on like that. There we go. And I'm maybe gonna get a brighter red, add a bit of a different color on top of that. That red's quite dark. I'm gonna give it a bit more red. There we go. Now the good thing with the curly whirlies is, is that when you add more on top it does make it darker so I tend to make it a bit darker in the middle where the wool is nice and thick and a bit lighter at the edges where it's starting to come out the edge of his, his body. We're also going to do curly whirlies for the arms so I think we'll get make him, I think he'll be waving today, he'll be saying hello. So we can take some curly whirlies and just make an arm like that. And his other hand is just really hanging down by his side so you can just pop it down at his side like that with another arm there. Perfect. How are you getting on with yours? I hope you're managing to do some curly whirlies to create two arms and a body. If you've managed to do that, the last thing I tend to do with these woolly jumpers is I give them cuffs. Your jumper probably has a cuff on it as well. And all that means is that I tend to take a thick rectangle like shape at the end of his arms, just to show where the end of his sleeves are. And also along the bottom of his woolly jumper to show where the end of the jumper is like that. And if you're feeling really fancy and you've got a bit of time, you may be rushing ahead, you can even add some little lines on the jumper to show that that's the jumper cuff there. Like that and like that. There we go. So, so far, we've got his face, we've got his wooly jumper. The next thing we're going to do now is move on to his legs. Now, this is the really, really easy part. And again, I would go back to using your initial pen color for that. I use the black pen, so I would go black as well. And you're going to give him two legs. One line like this, one line like this. And it's up to you what size of feet you want to give him. I tend to give them fairly small feet just because he's a mouse. But it's up to you. You might want to give him nice big feet. You might even want to give him boots. I could give him boots, actually. Let's give him some boots. There we go. It's up to you what you want him to wear on his feet, but you can just draw them in with your pen. And we're also going to need to give him some hands. Let's not forget his fingers. So if you finish with the legs and he's got his shoes or his boots on, then let's have a look at his hands. Now, at the moment, Chris Mouse is waving. If I was waving, my hand would be facing this way, which means the thumb is going to be closest to his ear. And then you've got four fingers coming out from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the cuff and I'm going to draw the thumb curving round like that and then I'm just going to draw in the four fingers and the little one at the end so one two three and a little finger at the end and that's him waving and interestingly if his other hand is down here you tend to find 
that most people would stand with their hand this sort of direction. So you're going to draw the thumb first again and then a couple of fingers, but you probably wouldn't see all the fingers because it's down at his side. So we've got his waving hand and we've got his side on hand. Next, what we're going to do is a bit of the light and dark shading that I was telling you about. So you're going to need to think about what color you would like your mouse to be. I'm going to make my mouse gray because he is gray in my book, so I'm going to make him gray, but he actually can be any color you like. He doesn't have to be gray. And we're also going to need to have some color for inside his ear. And usually for inside his ear, I go for pink. And I tend to use a light pink and a dark pink. But remember, you can just press harder if you're wanting to create light. Oh, if you're wanting to create light and dark. So let's do the inside of his ears first. First, what you want to do is start off with the light color or the light shading of his ears. So you're going to do that just inside of the line that you've drawn. on both sides. Right, now what we're going to do is we are going to add some dark shading in or some dark color, depending on what you have. So you can either do this by pressing a bit harder or choosing a darker color. And we're going to add some dark coloring down to the bottom corner of the ears to give it what I call a bit more depth to show that there's a darker area of the ear and then it gets lighter the closer to the surface it comes. So I've added a bit of dark shading but I'm just going to add some extra dark pink into the corner there and I'm going to blend it in again. I'm not going to have sharp lines so I'm just going to blend with my pencil to try and bring the two colours together. to do the rest of his face so I'm going to take my grey and I'm going to start with my light grey first. If you only have one colour that you're using all you want to do is start with some light shading so you're going to colour his whole face in in the light colour that you have but you want to do it in the direction you think his fur would be going so you'll see that I'm drawing down towards his nose and then up round his ears because that is the direction that you would go in if it was the fur on his body and round and down like that last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of dark shading to his face as well again you can either use the color that you've already been using maybe you've been using a brown or a different color and you can press a little bit harder if you need to I'm going to go for a darker gray so this was the light gray that I started with and I'm now switching to a darker gray I'm going to add some dark under his ears. So basically you want to look at wherever you think there would be some darker shading, wherever the light's not going to hit really on his face or on his ears. I'm going to make those slightly darker. I'm going to just put a bit of shading down the sides of his face as well. Like so, and then round the sides out of his eyes. A bit darker there and maybe a little bit just at the top here as well. And to finish off his fur, what we're going to do is just continue with the dark pencil or press a bit harder again. We're just going to add some little lines to show that he is furry. And again, these lines just go in the direction you want the fur to go in. So at the moment, I'm going right down to his nose, up to the top of his head. Like that. And then I'm going to go round his ears as well. Now it doesn't matter if it ends up in the pink, it doesn't even matter if it ends up just a little bit messy because these things are never meant to be that neat. You can add fur wherever you want, it doesn't matter if it goes out with the lines because it's just as fur. It's just adding that extra little bit of detail even if you go out with the black lines. And there we go, we've got a furry little mouse. And to finish him off, we'll use a black pencil. And this is how I always finish most of my pictures, is that I draw in a little bit of shading, a little bit of a, a squiggle at the bottom to show what they're standing on. And the last part and the most important and also I would say fun part is adding your signature to your picture so that everybody knows that this is your picture and that you drew it. So I'm going to put my signature down here so that everybody knows that that is the picture that I drew. And there we have it, this is Chris Mouse. So if you're finished with your picture, keep it somewhere safe. And let's find a new blank page. So now you know how to draw a mouse, we're going to try and draw him doing different things. And this is one of my favourite things to do because I love 
drawing Christmas and especially love drawing him on envelopes and all sorts of other things. Sometimes I draw him fishing, sometimes I draw him holding signs, sometimes I draw him dancing, sometimes I draw him sleeping. You can do anything. If you know how to do the mouse's head and you know how to do the body, then you can get him to do anything. So let's do another quick couple of mouse pictures. I'm going to do them for you first so you can watch some ideas I have and then you can go away and try some of your very own. But let's draw him first of all. Let's have him fishing. fishing and that's how you draw a mouse and it's very easy and what I'm now going to do is leave you to do a bit of drawing yourself and I'm going to set you one last drawing challenge so now you have to think of a way that you would like to draw Chris Mouse maybe you want to draw him fishing or holding a sign maybe you want to want to draw him riding a bike maybe you want to draw him swimming or sleeping or dancing you now have all the steps to be able to draw Chris Mouse so now it's up to you to go away and experiment with that but hopefully you'll be able to come up with something quite interesting with my mouse I really hope you've enjoyed today's session. If you do have any questions, let me know and I will try and answer them as best I can. Um, but it's been lovely working with you today. I've had a ball and it's been great fun doing a bit of drawing as well. And I hope you enjoy the rest of book week. Maybe see you soon. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Bye for now. See you later. Bye.